Welcome back, players. I'm Ryan Gomez. And I'm Liana Burnside. And we're here with another great round of preview cards from the upcoming Force of Will set, Curse of the Frozen Casket. That's right. Starting us off is Glorious the Silver Knight. Ah, Glorious. <laughs> yeah, it's a great removal option, and it leaves you behind a warm body to attack or defend. Yep, and we know that First Strike is a really great offensive ability. It doesn't do a whole lot defensively, but this right. thing packs a punch, right? Yes, which is definitely what Light needs, because they don't have a lot of aggressive cards that will help you push through. And it's weird that this one is an aggressive card, even though it is very reactive, because they still have to hurt you first. You get to punish them hard for it, but... Right. It's on them. All right. So partnering up with that, at least theme-wise, we've got Glorious' Summoned Soldier. Mm -hmm, right. And it looks like the last people of Gloria return as summons. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is a nice idea, but I feel like you need swiftness on your other guys to really take advantage of that extra 200. Otherwise, what? Right. And then <laughs> so either you have one of the few creatures that come with swiftness yeah. or you're wasting your resources given the swiftness Good. for that tiny buff. Right. Uh, well, mm, awkward. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, how about this next one? Escape from Crisis. Sorry. Double your chump blocks. <laughs> so it will help you survive just that one more turn mm -hmm. where you will probably still lose. I don't know. I don't, well, <laughs> a lot of the, like, white decks aim at just getting so much board presence you can eventually overwhelm it. Okay. And so at the beginning of the game, you kind of want to keep those critical ones like Life Profiteering Priest. you got to keep them alive. Sure. And it's worth noting this only stops the damage going to your guy, you still get to hurt them back, so it turns yes. a trade into a win. It's kind of an awkward removal spell kind of a thing in a right. way. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, not terrible, not terrible. Uh, talk to me about Return to the Moon Were Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's good to note that while additions are becoming more relevant, they're releasing some really good ones with the set, they're also releasing a way to deal with them. Yeah, and what I like about this one is that it doesn't just get it out of... You know, off the table, out of play, it puts it back on top of their deck, so they're going to draw it again. You're doing new stuff, they're doing the same thing again, they're kind of set back a whole turn. It's almost like right. you're taking a free turn. In a way. Which is very blue with that dealing with tempo, kind of controlling what your opponent's drawing. Absolutely, absolutely. Alright, so I like that one. I like it. You know, um, additions are, are kind of a, a weird card type, and we don't have a whole lot of ways to interact with them. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, the were-rabbits themselves are kind of a wonky tribe there, and they're getting a little more support. A little more support. Not quite a whole team yet, but we'll keep our eye on them. All right. and in the meantime, it's important to note that it looks like Moon Wear Rabbit has the same hairstyle as Siskel Lapis. Very same, important yeah, to note. Same That's, artist. <laughs> put that one in your little notepad for later. <laughs> you're going to want to know during trivia night. Okay, uh, last card. I know you're super excited about it. Do you want to introduce? Uh, yes, Cheshire Cat is returning with Cheshire Cat Guide to the Mysterious World. Okay, do you need a second to just... Yes, oh, I love I loved the original Cheshire Cat. It was such a good card, so mm -hmm. I'm super excited to see it coming back. Okay, so compare this new one to the old one. What what do we like? So the good thing about the old one was that by itself it didn't do anything. It just sets you up to do things. It allowed you that card draw advantage. Yeah. Um, sometimes being able to manipulate what was on top of your deck was great for Shion or Humpty Dumpty. It's what it allowed you to set up as a combo piece. And this card kind of does the same thing. By itself, it's... Mm, but if you're like comboing it with like Alisaris, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it definitely okay. starts to be interesting. I also like that uh, you can use the ability only once per turn, but you can use it on your opponent's turn as well. So yeah. you really twice every turn cycle yeah. in a way. Isn't isn't that the same mistake they made with Reflect Refrain? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, they'll get there. They're working on it. All right. <laughs> Trial and error. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it seems like it's a piece of a combo pie that is still being baked, we'll say. <laughs> the other ingredients aren't quite there yet, but maybe there's something from the past, the history of Force of Will you could tap into. If that's the case, what better place to get that card than tcgplayer.com? Come check us out. We've got all the great stuff that you need to make a Force of Will deck. We'll even have Curse of the Frozen Casket as soon as it's available. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're ready for that. Uh, like and subscribe to our video. Let us know in the comments what card you're excited about. And check back because we'll be covering stuff all the way up until the release, which is going to be here soon, right? It is. I'm so excited. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.